Hello and welcome to episode two of how to make an operating system in Rust. Um, today is probably going to be a short and sweet episode. We are going to uh, just put our build flow workflow and run workflow into two little shell scripts and fix the write volatile bug of last episode. So let's start with the build script. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to search for our um build command make sure that it still works yes it still works then we will just copy this into build.hsh the same with or run it still works okay and copy that into run.sh then we're gonna ch mod build and run and now we should be able to do this instead okay this all works the next thing we wanted to do is we wanted to fix the issue that we had in the last episode so as you remember we used this to write to the serial device the problem with that is that well if we write to a variable like this the compiler is allowed to actually optimize and omit this write if we never read from it to avoid this what we're going to do is we are going to do u8 adder dot write volatile csu8 take this one away uh yes this is the only change that we make here for now and if we build and run again we see nothing happens the reason for that was as we found out last episode that the floating point enable bit was not set so what we need to do is enable uh, fpn bits uh yeah fpn bits let's do it like this and to show you where i get my information it's the arm website um that would be this one to uh, enable the fpn bits we need this register cpacrel1 and actually bit 20 and 21 and we want to set them both to one to say no instructions are trapped to access this register we use the mrs to read and msr to write to it so let's do this so first thing we do the mrs instruction into x7 cpacr l1 then we or the whole thing into x7 use the value of x7 and we are going to write uh, d3 shifted by 20 since it starts at the 20th bit and d3 is uh, in binary a11 so and then we are just gonna store the whole thing into the register and that should already be enough to make it work so to check if it really works we're going back to the main function and we are going to panic here and it works very good so what i will do now is uh, i want to put the serial driver into its own little file to do that we are just going to copy all of this put it in here mark both of the functions as public and remove them from main okay do a mod of the serial right and use um, everything from it and that should in theory allow us to run with it in a different file very good um okay uh, this is like a short uh, little sweet episode the next one is going to be a little bit um bigger again we are in the next episode going to um write a k printlin 
macro so that we can print to the screen like in normal Rust fashion, which supports all the format specifiers and whatever you need. And um, since I want to dip into multi-core, we are also probably going to write a spin lock implementation first, because right now, if we have multiple cores that write to the same serial console, we are only going to get uh, garbage. So for that, um, we would just use a spin lock, yeah, a spin lock and like this, we can synchronize all the threads so that only one thread can uh, write to the serial console and at one time. Okay. Yeah, that is, oh, and also let's fix something else that I saw. Um, um, here it's already fixed, but if you don't have it, uh, this one also needs a star. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. that should be fine now too. What we can also do is we can just declare these two as no load, which means that they will not take any space in a binary. If we ls alh or my tut os right now, we have 772. Now we uh, cargo clean, then we build, and now we look at it again. It is just a little bit smaller but uh, if we make our sections like if you make a sex stack section way bigger then this will be very good um also what i'm gonna do here is i will oops that was not what i wanted to do i will actually use the stack size here And like this, yeah, like this, we only have to uh, change it like here and everything will be taken care of for us. Perfect. I actually want to know what happens if I just make it uh, like 24 bytes, just for a test. Nothing should happen, but okay, it's it actually works. <laughs> that was a nice experiment. Okay. Yeah, uh, as I said, next uh, episode, we are going to do um, the K print line. And also gonna do the threat synchronization primitive in mutex. Um, this episode is gonna be a little bit more complex. So it's gonna be a little longer again. So I hope you look forward to that. Thank you for watching this short and sweet episode and I see you in the next one.